I went ahead and finished off my uh, my wrinkles all around the armor. Uh, so as you can see, I just added some more wrinkles on the uh, clothing. And what I want to do now is I want this to kind of look like a texture, you know, so it, or not a texture, a uh, cloth. So there's a really cool mask that comes uh, with uh, 3DS's default masks. So you just left click on the masks. In mask presets, we're going to select the fabric mask. All right. Now we need to make sure that we're in the paint because you can't paint unless you're in the paint. Uh, and then you want to set your radius. We're going to move this up to 100 so it's uh, we have a bigger circle and we want to set the spacing to 1. Yours was probably at 0 0.25 or something so set it to a 1 in spacing. And then uh, let's create a new layer before we paint. That way we don't paint over our wrinkles and mess them up. And then we just kind of click and start painting over the armor. Try not to go over the same spot once otherwise it, you'll mess up the way it looks. Yeah, it looks kind of nice. And I'm just going to paint this fabric all around the armor. Yeah, kind of give it the illusion that it's a actual fabric. Go around to the side here, and you'll get better with doing messing with this paint program the more you use it. So I just use it a lot, and uh, I'm just doing this quick tutorial. I'd spend a lot more time if I was making the armor uh, for you know other people to use uh, which I'm sure you will probably be pausing this video and spending millions of years texturing your armor to make it look really awesome you know and you, the product of your outcome is going to look ten times better than mine I'm going to feel pitiful like psh, who am I you know forget that nice guy I blew him away <laughs> eh, I'm just painting this texture on here you just got to explore in the texture tools you know and see what what it's capable of there's so many different things it could do there's also you know, 3DS I'm sure has uh, some of their own tutorial videos on working with tech, this uh, texture program. You know, as soon as I'm done, uh, you know, setting everything up, I got this neat little illusion that it's a texture. Uh, that kind of helped blur out the uh, fact that that line's there, so it's good. I know how to fix that line. I just, you know, I'll show you guys later. Next time we do the other armor, I'll show you about the line. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, looks nice. Looks like it's uh, from a distance. You know, it's gonna be about that far away from the player in game. Yeah, it's pretty good there. Looks like a cloth with some wrinkles in it. Yeah, and there's uh, that's this. Uh, I'm gonna be good with this. Maybe want to paint it on bottom too. You always gotta pay it. Well, better zoom in. Gotta pay attention. There's it's also. A full armor, so you got to paint it on all the different faces of it. And uh, maybe some down here. Yeah, that looks good. And right, I'm happy with it. So, uh, as soon as you're happy with yours, you know, you've painted it up, made it look pretty nice. Um, you would right click on your screen. Now this window is going to pop up as soon as you right click. It says layers have been added to the image. Choose your action. Continue painting. That's if you know you just want to keep working on it. Save as a PSD file. Flatten layers and save the current texture. This is the one we want. Um, so just always flatten the layers and save the current texture. I'll select that. It saves it. All right. Now now it's been saved. Um, and it's pretty much done. Yeah, I should have actually flattened the layers before I did this, so I could have seen that it, you know, the textures could have been done a little bit better. Like, you just have to play with it and spend your time when you work on this. You know, make your textures and make it look really nice. Uh, this is just an example. You know, I'm sure you can create something that looks way better than this. Um, to flatten layers and add them together, you would right-click on the layer and then select Merge Down or Merge Visible. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is all good. We have a texture file now for this, and we're pretty much done working with this armor, so we can uh, go ahead and uh, start uh, working on a brand new piece of armor. So I'm going to close this window here. I'm going to deselect the armor and hit Alt-W. Uh, make my windows about the same size. 
and uh, I've already exported the armor I just created the texture for the armor so I don't need anything in here so I'm just going to click on my 3ds symbol and select new you want to save your changes well, you can if you want I'm not going to to mine I'm going to on my 3ds symbol I'm going to drop it down I'm going to select import and then I'm going to find my UMP custom armors folder I'm going to go to data meshes base body mesh I'm going to select female body underscore zero all right, as soon as all this uh, window is set up, make sure all your settings are the same as mine. We don't have a skeleton, so we're going to import the skeleton. Now I'm going to show you another method of creating an armor. Don't worry about all that stuff we just did. It's all going to come together when we uh, are done creating the bottom half of the armor. The good thing to do when creating armors is create one piece at a time, you know, and uh, or you can create it all together and size it all together. Um, and hide each one and export them individually and then piece them together in the end. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial we're just gonna go about it this way. Let's go ahead and create the bottom half of the uh, armor here. So remember what we did. We're gonna select the body, we're gonna right click and we're gonna select hide unselected. That hides the skeleton. Then we're gonna right select the body. We're going to select freeze selection so we don't mess it up. Alright, now in the top view pane uh, we're going to press Alt W. We're going to be creating, uh, you know, just a undergarment, a quick one, uh, and we'll get into better ways and different ways of creating undergarments or pants and different parts of the armor in later tutorials. This is just another method for creating armor in Skyrim, and you're really going to like this one. It, this is uh, great for, especially for beginners who are not that good with working for polygons and stuff. This is a really easy way of doing stuff. You're going to go to your Create tab. Uh, pardon me. You're going to select uh, shapes and you're going to select line. All right. You want to make sure start new shape is checked. All right. Zoom way in on the body in the front view pane. Remember, I hit Alt W to get the whole window open. And I'm going to uh, create a line. We're just going to draw just really close to the character, as close as you uh, can get, with just leaving a little gap. And we want something for the gravity to hook onto. So we're going to draw a line up here just above the hips. All right, we're making a pair of granny panties, if you're wondering. <laughs> and then uh, you're going to just click on the screen to create a vertice in the line. You know, So I'm just basically moving the line where I want. I'm trying to match it up on both sides. I'm trying to do my best to make sure that they're at equal heights so they're asymmetrical. Then I'm going to click for a new vertice. Then and when you're done, you go back to the very first vertice and you click again. And now it says close spleen. Yes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the screen so I don't accidentally create another line. Then I'm going to select my line. I'm going to right click on my line. And I'm going to select clone. Now it's saying how do you want to clone it? We're going to copy it. All right, so we're going to create a copy of it. I'm going to select OK. Now there's a copy. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on our screen. We're going to select rotate and in the Z axis we're going to type in 180 down here in the lower half then press enter lower right rather press enter now we're going to go to the modify pane we're going to right click on our screen we're going to select move we're going to select in selections in the modify pane we're going to select vertex and we're going to match up these vertices. All right. See how, if you look real close, you can see that there's the original line that we copied from and then our new line that we just, you know, our copy of that line. We're going to match the vertices up. There's a reason for this. It helps, helps uh, make it look better. And select the vertice and try to match this one up with the original. Just try to make them as close as you can possibly get them. All right. These could be moved over a little bit. I could go there. This can go here. Don't have to be perfect, but pretty darn close. As soon as you're done with all that, you're going to deselect the vertice, deselect vertexes, right click on your screen, and we're going to rotate it back. So you're going to go down here to Z. Remember, you right click, select rotate, go down here to Z, and type in zero, and press enter. Now it's back the way it was. Now it's not matching, but that's okay because we're actually going to be rotating this again in the future before we create the cloth. Now we're going to right click on this, we're going to select move. 
Now with this line selected, you kind of want to zoom out a bit to give yourself some room on the side to work with and just drag it over. All right, and then select the original line and drag it over off to the side so you have some room to work with here. Now we can zoom in a little bit on it and we're going to select with one of the lines select, doesn't matter which one, one of them selected, you're going to select attach. With uh, attach selected, you're going to mouse over the, the other line and you'll see this like handcuffs will pop up. As soon as you see it, just click and then right click on your screen. Now they are attached to each other, they are a single object. Now with them attached, we're going to select vertexes. Now we can select vertexes on both lines. So we're going to select all of them. The reason we're selecting all of them is they're all going to be going, uh, this is going to connect to this, and this is going to connect to this, and this is going to connect to this. All right. Now if I had like, uh, I was creating a shirt and there was a vertice right here, I would not select that for this step. Okay, because that wouldn't connect. You wouldn't want it to be broken. All right, you'd want it to stay a solid. All right, so uh, with all the vertices selected, remember I just dragged and clicked. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to select break in the geometry tab. You're going to break them. What that happens, what that does, don't do this. I'm just showing you. I'm going to select the vertice and look. Now it's detached. There's actually two vertices there. All right, I'm going to hit control Z to put it back. Now that they're broken, I'm ready for the next step. I'm going to go to the modifier list. I'm going to drop down this modifier list. And I'm going to scroll down to Garment Maker. I'm going to select Garment Maker. Now they're going to completely change. I'm going to go up here into the modifier pane. And right here, there's a little plus sign. I'm going to drop that down. And I'm going to select Panels. You'll see it right here. With Panels selected, now I can select the whole panel. right? Now we're going to move kind of back over here where we can see our body and we're actually going to on the X plane we're going to drag these back over right where they were. One right on top of that body directly where they were, one on top of the other and try to line them up to where they are directly on top of one another as best you can. Remember they're not going to match up 100% because those vertices don't match after we rotated them like we did. They will here in a second. All right. Now we're ready for, to get out of this. So with nothing selected, press Alt-W, and then go back into your perspective window and press Alt-W. Now use the block to kind of get an angled view of your UMP body or your body. Select one of the panes, doesn't matter which one, and drag it forward. Not for this tutorial. If you drew one to be a front and it's supposed to be the front, then it would matter, but for now it doesn't. And make sure you drag it out of the body, really close to the body, not too close, but just close enough. And you don't want it colliding like that. You want to drag it out a little bit more, kind of use the side view. And you know, I'm just using the Y, I'm making sure only Y is selected. And when I moved them over, I made sure only X was selected. You know, that way they're moving sideways or forward, they're not moving at an angle. That way they line up better. All right. Now that I have one in the front and one in the back, well, I need to know where the textures are going to be applying to the UV map. So I need to go up here and click on Realistic in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to select Hidden Line. There we go. Now I want you to take a very close look. This is black, and if I scroll around to this, it's white. The white is where the texture is applied to the mesh. All right. If it's not white, it needs to be white. Since this side is white, I don't need to rotate it. Remember I said we were going to be fixing those vertices not lining up? Yep. Select this pane because it's black in the front. Select this one. We need to rotate it. So right click anywhere and select rotate. All right. Uh, now we want to rotate it on the right axis. Since we're in the perspective pane, we want to rotate it on the Z axis. So highlight in the lower right hand corner and type in 180 and click on your screen and bam we have it rotated. Now don't do anything and just move on to the next video.